Be careful, Calvin, right. you're going right. to the ceiling. Uh-oh. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Bonnie. How, How are you doing? doing? <laughs> All right. Hey, is that Kippy Driver's wife? Did you post yeah. Mary Driver? That's his wife. That's who oh, he was married I, I to. I know. Passed away. Are those his children? I know. Can picture them? The youngest one is his biological son. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he has. Yeah, I have to tell you because she said she said. Don't hit the. Oh, don't hit that. Yeah. Fat will flood everything. Huh? So I took your shower. Thank you. <laughs> the entire building would go off. Am I out of the way? No problem. Are ready? Okay. Hello. Thank you, everyone, for being here with us this morning. Last Friday, the Bureau of Labor Statistics provided the most up-to-date readout of our economy with the new jobs number. We continue to add jobs slowly but steadily. In fact, over the past few years, unemployment has declined, significantly dropping below 5% for the first time since the recession in January, even though we may have had a little blip this last reporting period, has something to do with the fact that more people are actually hopefully looking for jobs. While most signs point toward a strengthening economy, there's a huge group being left behind the long-term unemployed. BLS defines long-term unemployed as individuals having been without a job for more than 27 weeks, and the long-term unemployed tended to be overrepresented in specific groups of people. They're most likely to be people of color, they're typically older, many of them are over the age of 55, and education doesn't play a major role. They're just as likely to have a high school diploma as they are to have a bachelor's degree. But the worst part about long-term unemployment is that once you've fallen into that group, it is incredibly difficult to climb out of it. The longer these Americans are forced to go without a job, the slimmer their chances get of finding them. Employers tend to discriminate against the long-term unemployed for two equally unjustifiable reasons their age, and the misguided belief that being out of the workforce has dulled their skills. In the process, our economy is hit in two ways. First, we miss out on the years of valuable experience those people have previously accrued in their fields. And second, we end up with families in some of the most dire economic straits imaginable. The thing is, long-term unemployment doesn't mean the obligations these folks face can be put on hold. Mortgages still need to be paid, and pursuing a new career or an additional degree or certificate requires more money. So when these individuals deplete their accounts, they're forced to dip into their retirement accounts, having massive fees in the process. We're punishing them for trying to stay afloat in a situation they're not responsible for, and that's just wrong. Here in New Jersey, we have the unfortunate distinction of one of the highest long-term unemployment rates in the nation. So today I'm announcing two pieces of legislation aimed at tackling the complex problem of long-term unemployment. There are two steps to this crisis, stabilizing folks who are unemployed and giving them the chance to find jobs. The first piece of legislation would prevent those who fit the definition of long-term unemployment 
from having to pay excessive fees for tapping their retirement accounts to keep themselves financially stable. The second bill would create a work opportunity tax credit for employers incentivizing the hiring of older Americans who fall into the long-term unemployment category so we can get those folks back to work. These bills alone may not be able to solve the entire problem of long-term unemployment, but they certainly go a long way helping the many American families for whom the economy just isn't improving, despite what the job reports might say. So with that, um, I don't see my county executive here yet. I would like to introduce you to Mr. Cliff Bywak, who has a personal story to, ex uh, to share with you today. Chris, thank you for being here. Thank you. Neil. Good morning, everyone. My name is Cliff Byrock. Um, since 1998, I have been in transition seven times, primarily due to downsizings and reorganizations. My professional experience spans multiple industries and major Fortune 500 companies. Since June of 2014, I have been out of work for, for a total of 22 months at this point. With a family of five to support, I have gone through all of my savings, my cash brokerage account, and have dipped into my IRA on two occasions so far. As a result of long-term unemployment, I have faced financial uncertainty, depression, and the anxiety associated with knowing not knowing what's, what's going to happen next. Trying to maintain one's sanity and being motivated in this, in this uh, situation is very difficult. To survive the challenges of long-term unemployment, I receive support from my family and friends in my network. In addition, I have utilized the services offered by the One Stop Career Centers, as well as the New Start Career Network. I also attend various networking events, which provide assistance, guidance, and training to job seekers, as well as performing volunteer work at a local nonprofit to maintain my skill sets. Again, uh, I'd like to thank Congressman Bonnie Watson Coleman for introducing these bills to assist the long-term unemployed in our, in our country. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing. Now it's my pleasure to bring Beverly Brown Ruggia of New Jersey Citizen Action forward for a few brief remarks. Thank you, Congresswoman Watson Coleman. Uh, I'm delighted to be here with you today uh, as you announce these bills, which address the most one of the most pervasive and devastating economic problems we face in New Jersey and across the nation: long-term unemployment. New Jersey Citizen Action's 100 partner organizations and 50,000 individual men members can commend you for recognizing that older Americans are among the most affected by this issue. In 2014, on average, 45% of job seekers 55 and older were out of work for 27 weeks or more. Although the number of jobs available have increased, extended unemployment coupled with age discrimination, as the Congresswoman pointed out, intensifies the challenges for older work workers looking for jobs. And when older job seekers do find work, they're frequently underemployed with much lower pay. Extended unemployment and any loss of income in the pre-retirement years not only destabilize the financial well-being of older Americans while they're still raising their families, and in many cases, trying to pay off mortgages, it can also ruin their prospects for financial security in retirement. The Investing in Older Workers Act is especially welcome in New Jersey, which the Star-Ledger reported as still number one in the United States for foreclosures in 2015. As New Jersey's largest provider of free HUD certified housing and counseling, housing and foreclosure counseling, Citizen Action sees firsthand the effects unemployment on home ownership among <coughs> has on older Americans and especially in lower and moderate income families. One of the most common factors that contributes to foreclosure and bankruptcy is long-term unemployment. And although programs like Homekeeper provide a temporary relief, relief for those facing foreclosure, the best way to help older Americans keep their homes is getting them back to work before they reach financial crisis. The Investing in Older Workers Act will help do just that. 
Citizen Action is proud and grateful to have Congresswoman Watson Coleman in the U.S. Congress leading the nation with the kind of legislation and policies she proposes today, which address the needs of people facing challenges that come from being unemployed and devastating mm -hmm. economic crises. We stand with the Congresswoman in her efforts to get older Americans back to work and back on track to financial security. Thank you, Thank Congresswoman. You Now I'd like to uh, bring someone for some brief remarks, Anna Lilia Mejia, who has been on the front lines for working families every single solitary day. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'll keep my remarks very brief. I just want to raise up the fact that in New Jersey and in this congressional district, we are so very lucky to have a forward-thinking and progressive member of Congress, unlike some of our peers. <laughs> spectrum are talking about punishing people instead of figuring out ways to create incentives for employment or create ways to stop punishing people in their hour of need. I am so proud to be able to say that I stand with Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman not only on this particular bill but on multiple issues that she has put forth that actually help working families. Across our state we have been you know pushing this this call that unfortunately the policy decisions that we have made are based on trickle down that often doesn't and these bills actually create a way a hand up for working families the idea that we would punish people with additional penalties and fees when they need their money in order to stabilize their families is cruel and just and actually bad policy the idea that we actually give feel free to give money to corporations in a shell game if whether or not they're going to create a job or not, um, that that makes sense, um, is untenable to me, is un unconscionable to me. But this idea that we would say to a corporation, you know what, you deserve a tax break if you actually create a job for this particular needy classification of worker. Actually connecting the need to tax incentives makes sense. Giveaways do not. So again, I laud you for your efforts. I laud you for all the work that you do. And we are looking forward to knocking on doors and talking to people to educate them on this. Thank you. If we're going to unlock the true power of our economy, we can't afford to leave Americans behind who want to work and who are qualified to work and who are looking for jobs. Long-term unemployment is a major, major problem. A problem the likes of which we haven't seen in decades. The numbers are declining, but not quickly enough. So it's time to come up with some real solutions. That's one of the reasons that I'm excited to, to announce that I've worked with Princeton University to create a policy forum on long-term unemployment, which will take place in two weeks on that famous day of the year, April 15, also known as IRS Tax Day. Um, one of our keynote speakers will be the renowned economist, Alan Kruger, and I look forward to the discussion and to seeing those bills that we have talked about today considered in Washington. And with that, if there are any questions? April 15th is not the only auspicious date. The Congresswoman holding this press conference today is quite auspicious. More auspicious than April, April 15th. One of the cores of the problem as indicated by Congresswoman Coleman is the disproportionate impact that this and other issues have on the black community. That Black Lives Matter is the core of so many social issues that we face. And that April 4th is the anniversary of a man standing up for the rights of workers, AFSCME sanitation workers. Dr. Martin Luther King was murdered on this day. Fighting for civil rights and recognize that civil rights and economic justice are inextricably linked. But Black Lives Matter is the core moral issue in America and from that permeate a number of other issues including making sure that we show due regard for the dawn of life and the recognition now that the twilight of life <clears throat> has been pushed back way back and that you cannot expect to push back social security to 67 or beyond and not provide 
a real economic infrastructure for Social Security and other means, including this fantastic piece of legislation, without taking into account the structural changes that we are facing in this economy. And so once again, Bonnie Watson Coleman, Congresswoman Coleman has again standard bearer throughout the generations that her family has represented and echoing the voice of such great leaders as Dr. Martin Luther King and our own Senator Bill Bradley, that there are core issues that we cannot ignore and we are so lucky to have a Congresswoman leading this particular battle and so many others in the United States Congress representing not only this district, but the concerns of the entire United Thank States. You, Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. I will take you on the road with me. <laughs> but it is, it is really very fitting to recognize that today is the anniversary of the death of Dr. Martin Luther King. And that we're still pursuing that work that Dr. King gave his life for. Any questions? <laughs> Could you um, help me to understand the process that these bills will take before they're like... They're first got to be introduced. Become... <laughs> there are two separate bills here. Okay. They are introduced. They will get assigned to a committee. The committee chairs will decide whether or not to call them up to be discussed in the committee. Um, they could leap from introduction to the floor if we were in the majority, um, but that's another that's another discussion for another we'll day. Um, so it is not a it's, it's not a quick process, and it, I will more than likely go around when I'm on the floor with a dear colleague letter that explains these two bills, asking my colleagues to sign on as co-sponsors, and if you you know, can generate enough interest, you can sometimes influence what the Republican majority is willing to listen to. How long does that process take? And there's no way of knowing. Okay, is there anything that we as citizens can do to assist in, you know, do we need to call? Sure, first of all, we'll give you the information on the bills and you can certainly post them because your <coughs> social media is really very important right now. Mm -hmm. um, you can also reach out to people you don't have to call your Congress representative. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you have friends right, in, other in other districts that you most assuredly, as particularly in Burlington County, okay. um, in Camden County, uh, down in Atlantic County. Yeah. Okay. People in places of that nature and, you know, even going north to express an interest. You have people outside of the state that follow you on Facebook, to follow you, you know, let them know. Um, it is important to use whatever communication networks we have access to, to get the word out and to show that there's a desire and a will to get something of this nature done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Good. Thank you. 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 Thank you.